Alrighty, getting back to the Forerunner today. I've started to find a couple things that I don't really like. Some weird scratching in the cylinders, possibly from it sitting, just weird odds and ends. So, gonna pop off the oil pan and see if it shows us any more of what might be going on with it. So, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Everything else is in great shape. I don't know if this thing previously sat with a blown head gasket and, or just had water in the cylinders in general and sat. It's like, this thing's kind of got a weird life. It had a timing belt done in 2002, I think it was, and it had only gotten 10,000 miles put on since then. So why were they in there for the timing belt in 2002, and why did it sit for so long after that? Was somebody scared to drive it after this all happened, or who knows? It's kind of just a weird mystery ordeal that I'm left to figure out now, so... This, we're probably just going to try and hone the cylinders out and see what happens. And yeah, we're going to just take the oil pan off and see if it shows us any more information on it. So. Well, got the oil pan off a while ago. Got the engine on its side now, just letting as much goop drain out of this thing as possible. Can't really find anything in here that seems concerning, but I'll show you what we found on our cylinders here. So, when you look at the top there, you can see the difference in shade there, and it's just like, it's a slight score, slash like scratch in the cylinders, it's like I almost it's almost like this engine sat with water in it or a coolant you know possibly a blown head gasket prior to this one but like all my cylinders have similar marks so just kind of playing around like I think we're gonna try and just run a, a ball hone in it and see what happens I I don't want this to escalate too much a whole motor is not really the plan for this so I, I probably will just be honing it and putting it back together this thing ran perfectly fine didn't burn any oil or nothing before the blown head gasket so it's like try and run it with it in my mind that I know it's gonna probably turn into a problem down the road but I don't know we will see see what the hone does probably probably not tomorrow but the next day so yeah for now, I'm just cleaning up parts. Got my windage tray all cleaned up because it looked just as bad as what the oil pan did. Actually glad that I pulled this off. I was kind of debating on not pulling it off. So glad I did because man, that's a lot of sludge that would have just went right back through it. So take it apart, clean it all up and Hopefully that scratching in the cylinders isn't going to give me too much issue down the road, but we will see. It's kind of the risk you take on, well, this is a, almost a, this is a 30 year old vehicle now. So, is what it is, going to see what we can make of it, so. As I'm here cleaning the pan, this is my first sign of like actual, ooh, there's metal. That's, oh, my hand's blocking it. So you can see right there, that's a nice chunk. That's also a nice chunk. It's all glitter down in there. And I found a few other chunks up in the top here that then they wash into my bucket, but uh, I just, I'm just don't know what to do with this thing right now. I think I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to pull a, pull a, a rod, rod cap and just 
see if that looks like one of them have any damage. It's like, that's a pretty, there were some pretty good metal shavings in there. And yeah, yikes. We'll see. This is, looks like it's going to escalate though, way more than I wanted it to. I just don't feel good putting this motor together. All my friends keep laughing and saying that it's okay. Or, not that it's okay, but just swap it. I just didn't want this thing to go this far. I don't know. I think, I don't want the Forerunner to become a back burner project, but I might look for a short block. I'm debating on if I should have my buddy not send the heads out now. We'll see. Let's pull a cap and see what we find. Hmm. Wow. That bugger's tight. Hmm. Let's hope a piston don't fall out of here now. That would be my luck. Well, luckily the bearing looks good. I can at least, I can at least rest easy with that. Cool. That makes me feel a lot better, at least knowing that there's not a bunch of scoring in here. I really can't easily check the main bearings, but this is good. Cool. I'm just going to snug that one up. That was cylinder number one. I want to check cylinder number six too because that's going from the first one to get oil to the last one to get oil. I'll bring my torque wrench home tomorrow and get these torques back up. But I'm happy to see that there's no damage to that bearing. There is just enough metal shavings in there to make me question it. I don't really get worked up over that stuff, but I just, I found a couple weird little pieces and with everything going on with this engine right now, it's kind of like better safe than sorry. I'd rather check it and know for sure than regret putting this thing together. I mean, who knows? I still might regret putting this thing together, but. We will see. If I don't find any damage on the bearings, I'm okay with putting it together. So I'm just kind of assuming that if cylinder one is good and cylinder six are good, the other ones are going to be good. So, yeah. Probably not a good theory, but in my mind, cylinder one's the first one to get oil and cylinder six is the last, so. Maybe. So. A little bit more wear than cylinder one, but compared to half the engines I've dealt with within the last year, I don't think it's enough that I'm going to be concerned about right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's... There's definitely wear there compared to cylinder one, but... It's, it's just, it's very minor. I'm just very OCD, so... We'll see what happens. I think all we can do is just kind of run it at this point. I'll keep debating my decisions with this thing. It's There's enough little damage that makes me not really want to put it together, but at the same time, I don't have the budget for another engine, so... Plus, I don't really want to get another engine. Because if I get another engine, it's not going to be a 3 liter. That's my problem. And I got enough projects laying around, so to do an engine swap on my daily driver, it's just like, it's not, it's not ethical at the moment. So I got a lot of stuff I'm trying to do. But we'll see what happens. I'm just kind of all playing this by, playing this by ear right now. Like I said, just see what happens. I don't know. If I could find a short block for cheap, that would be awesome. That would make me feel a lot better about all this just because, I don't know, it's just like I said, there's just enough little stuff going on here that I don't feel fully comfortable with this short block right now. So. We'll see what happens within the next few days, see what I can figure out and put together for it. But she might just be getting put together the way she is and seeing how long she lasts. It'll be a little bit of an experiment engine. But that sucks because then you just kind of know at one point your daily driver is just going to fail you. Life of a car guy, I guess. Take our gambles, so. Alrighty. Welcome to the start of another day. Kind of weird, I'm out in my truck. I just left work and I just picked up something for the Forerunner. So I'm gonna get this home and get her in the garage and we'll, we'll see what I might have snowballed myself into here, so. we have made it in the shop and if you didn't guess that's a new motor so yeah that happened and if you notice anything closer on the way in yeah we we are gonna embark in a 3-4 swap looked into it a bit I think it's actually going to be pretty easy um, <laughs> because of me being the vehicle hoarder I am I've actually got a full T100 out back with a blown 3.4 although I wouldn't have had to go get this if it didn't have a blown 3.4 but I'm going to steal the wiring harness and the ECU off the parts truck now and back so it'll be nice all my Toyotas will be 3.4s everything will be the same and from the research I've done this thing should bolt right in. All I gotta do is take my three liter motor mounts and apparently they'll bolt right on. 
I'll take my three liter clutch and starter and flywheel, bolt it right on, and then it should bolt right up. Um, I gotta put the three liter oil pan on the three four. And then it's just kind of from there going through simple, not simple wiring, but you know, going through the wiring and merging two harnesses. So yeah, hopefully I can still have this done in like a couple weeks. So that was the goal for the original plan and that should be the goal for this one now. I mean, I have basically everything I need. I'm going to have my buddy order me up some odds and ends gaskets for this just to throw on because it's out and yeah wish me luck let the three four engine swap on my forerunner begin I suppose I am now right back to where I was Sunday afternoon when we started so time for that engine to go on that stand there we go just like that right back to where we started Minus that hovering above us. But that means nothing to us now. We are under this. <laughs> so, gonna basically just start with tearing this harness off. Sadly, somebody just cut it. Oh well, I see a bunch of broken plugs and shit anyway, so I'll tear the whole harness off my parts truck, use that matching ECU. Maybe a bunch of other bits, maybe I'll take like the throttle body and stuff, but I don't know, we'll see. For now, Time to strip her down and get her all cleaned up that we were right back in the same spot for tomorrow. I can't do nothing but laugh. This was this was a free engine from a good friend of mine. Uh, I don't. He didn't really know the health of it. That's why it was free. But drain the oil, and I actually panicked because I didn't because water started coming out and I didn't catch it right away. But caught a little bit of water in the oil there. So I immediately like oh, ripping the intake off or rip the timing cover off. Let's see if this has a good belt because it didn't turn over. It, it's right where it is. Um, I didn't put a big bar on it. I just used my little 3 8 ratchet, but you know, that should be enough to turn over an engine still. Usually I can. So I immediately want to check the belt. Belt's intact. Well, next step, pull the intake. And our first bank here isn't great. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera but uh, you can kind of see down in there. That one there is open. So the valves are clean, but I can't really tell what's in there. Um, that one there is probably gonna be hard to see. That one there you can see, the valves don't look too bad. There's some crud on them. And we come over here to the second bank. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do for a different angle on this. Well, there you go. That's probably the best it's gonna get. That's the first one. Move on over. There's our second one. Oh, where's our? Oh man, the fuel rail might be in the way to see this last one. Nope. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sadly, that's the state of our free 3 4 swap. So, I think at this point the project will be going on hold. Sucks to say I really wanted to get my Forerunner back in action, but oh well, I mean, that's how it goes. I will get this back on the road soon, definitely this summer, but 
I might have to save some money to actually decide which route I'm going to go. And I think it's still going to end up being a 3-4 swap if I'm buying a motor. Because I think a three, buying a 3-4 is probably going to be cheaper than punching that one out, putting pistons and rings and all that fun stuff in it. So, going to be on the look for a stock 3-4, I guess. Not in any rush. I definitely got to save some money. There's plenty of projects to work on, so... Yeah, definitely kind of sad. I was excited to get this one going. But... What do you do? I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, some people go to a casino and gamble. I pull engines out of friends' garages. It's just, it's still gambling. <laughs> so... Yeah, sucks to say, I really don't know what else to say on this, but I think that's going to be the end of our Forerunner project for a little while. Sucks to see it end so soon. I was really looking forward to, like I said, I was just looking forward to having my Forerunner back. I love this thing so much, so hopefully middle to end of this summer, we'll get her going, but like I said, plenty of other projects to do, and it's getting close to summertime, so I'm going to start pulling vehicles out of storage, and I'll have plenty of things to drive, so off to the shed she'll probably go. But stay tuned for more projects, definitely going to have a lot more going on, so stay tuned for it, that's all I can say. I got a lot of exciting stuff to come this summer I think. <laughs>